will be taking IR portion. I am Ruchika, Ruchika Bhardwaj. Okay. The first topic that is given in the content is India Pakistan Sir Creek dispute. First topic is your Sir Creek. See, last month nothing has, nothing uh, very special has happened on this topic, Sir Creek issue. No significant step has been taken on this issue, but why we have included it, why Vision team has included it, because there was one big article in the Hindu and right now even interviews are going on. So this current is for, it's an amalgamation for your PT, for your mains as well as for your interviews. So you might get a question, those who are appearing for interviews, interviews are till 6th of May, 6th or 8th of May, yeah, 8th of May, interviews are there. So, and this is one of the important topics also, Pakistan has always been important, last year GS paper 2 also you got question on Pakistan, track 2 diplomacy type questions were there and last December. Uh, the uh, talks between India and Pakistan. Now, what is what it is called? It is called comprehensive bilateral dialogue, which has ten points. And one of the important aspects of that comprehensive bilateral talk is your Sir Creek dispute. Where is Sir Creek? Gujarat. I am not good at drawing, but still, supposingly, I'll try to. Clear your doubts, clear the basic things about Sir Creek. So, Sir Creek is basically an estuary. What is an estuary geography students? Everybody should know what is an estuary. Find it out if you do not know. Sir Creek is basically a 96 kilometer area, which is a disputed area. Tidal estuary it is. So, first thing why Sir Creek? Why it is called Sir Creek? The person the British representative who started to negotiate for this dispute, his name was Creek, so it is called, after him it is called Sir Creek. So what is the issue? How it all started? Actually, initially it was interstate dispute between Kutch and Gujarat. When India did not get independence, that time it was an interstate dispute between Kutch and Gujarat and when India became independent partition happened, it became an international issue between India and Pakistan. Actually there were some disputes regarding collection of fire firewood in the creek area between Kutch and Sindh. Yeah, Kutch and Sindh, it's, it was an interstate dispute between Kutch and Sindh. So there was an issue with respect to collection of firewood between these two states. And then Sir Creek was deployed there to solve the issue. Government of, uh, British government of India has appointed uh, one delegate, uh, one uh, commission which is called Government of Bombay, GOB commission was there and it has given its recommendations also. The recommendations given by it, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the suggestions given by it are having very confusing, conflicting remarks. That is why the dispute is there. As per that, one paragraph of that 1914 government of Bombay province, uh, this thing, they said, this line should be used as a dividing line. And another paragraph of the same resolution said, this should be the dividing line. So it is a conflicting thing. It is not clear in that government of uh, Bombay province ka jubi wo tha, usme it was not clear. One paragraph is saying this should be the dividing line, the other paragraph is showing, saying this should be the dividing line. So why Sir Creek is important? Because this area is full of oil gas, natural minerals are there. So that is why both the countries want to have a say on this. So what happened? Right now India is saying we should go ahead with this, this thing. India is saying we should go ahead with this partition. According to Thalvik, Thalvik principle are you all aware of? What is Thalvik principle? It is in geography. 
whenever there is a non navigable river the middle of the channel is taken as a dividing line and when there is a newly formed island supposingly there is a newly formed island island then island ko beech se karenge navigate kaise karenge in that case what the tholbeck principle says if there is a newly formed island then where the middle of the channel where the flow is maximum that will be taken as your dividing line so according to tholbeck this is what india is saying but pakistan is saying we should divide it like this and supposingly india goes for this division then we are going to lose approximately 250 square miles exclusive economic zone the issue the stake is of eez we are going to lose 250 miles of square miles of this area so india is saying we should go with this and we should not go with this then pakistan is saying ki this thalvek principle is applicable pakistan is saying thalvek principle is applicable only for navigable rivers while sar creek is a tidal estuary so it should not apply to that pakistan's argument is it's a non navigable river so we should not go with the thalvek principle but india is saying india is saying this is a tidal river during high tides navigation happens there during high tide navigation occurs there and in the international uh, many of the cases internationally many of the maritime boundaries with similar kind of uh, disputes have been resolved through thalvek principle so it is saying it should not apply here because it is a non navigable but india is saying during high tide it is used for navigation so it should be a navigable thing another point of concern is see the division that has been the thalvik thing that has been the line that has been drawn was drawn quite few years back and during this whole period the course of the river has also shifted so if we apply the thalvik principle that was done that time then both the sides india as well as pakistan both are going to lose many of their wetlands so that is another issue then third issue is india what is india proposing india is saying let's demarcate the issue let's demarcate this area as per talos T A L O S technical aspect on laws of seas so india is saying let's follow the fundamental principle tell us technical aspects on laws of the sea and demarcate it but pakistan is saying first resolve the dispute and then only we will demarcate so that is again another issue of conflict between both the countries then another point is pakistan is saying let us take this dispute at the international platforms but india is saying no it's a bilateral issue the same thing in siachen also they are saying let's take it to the international platform but india does not want any third country to intervene any third party to intervene because it's a bilateral issue so these are the points of disputes and since 1969 12 rounds of talks have happened last 12th round was 2012 2012 me last round of talks had happened but till date nothing has occurred nothing fruitful has occurred and uh, sar creek is also at times in the media it is said like it's a low hanging fruit low hanging means it can be each easily plucked so that is why whenever there are talks between india and pakistan then it's always said okay let's start with sir creek let's start with the issues which are not of that severe importance so that is why sir creek is an important aspect one uh, group of people or one group of analysts they say let's resolve this issue nahi tumhara nahi hamara neither yours nor mine let us um, dem <laughs> demarcate this as a maritime park and both the country should take care of that park so this is what is the sar creek issue
the second thing that is given in your sheets is about okay what are the challenges what are the problems being faced if sir creek issue is not resolved first is your fishermen there is no clear cut demarcation so at times fishermen with their boats their trawlers they cross the boundaries and they land land up in the jails either in pakistan or in india whosoever crosses they land up in jail second thing is 2611 mumbai attack yeah terrorists use this undemarcated thing even uh, your smugglers your drug peddlers they are using it so this issue needs to be resolved as soon as possible it is good for both the countries now india and seychelles second thing that is given in your sheets is india and seychelles what has happened in india and seychelles relationship last month exercise namitye this fact is important from your pt point of view at times they give you exercises and the name of the countries so this exercise lamitya that has occurred last month between india and seychelles this is this exercise happens every 2 years it's not annual exercise it happens every 2 years it happens between indian army and the seychelles people's defense force S D S P D F Seychelles People's Defence Force. It happens by uh, every two year. It's a military exercise between India and Seychelles. Exercise Lamitya. Lamitya means friendship. Then another thing that has happened uh, with relation to India and Seychelles was Navy's aircraft on mission Seychelles. One aircraft has gone there. Are you aware of it? P eighty one was in the news. Surveillance naval surveillance aircraft. It's a aircraft which was sent by the Indian Navy to Seychelles to survey their special eco exclusive economic zone. This kind of cooperations. Why it is important? These things are given in your sheets also. You can read it. But we will uh, try to know why this is important. How this kind of fact can be used in your answers? Okay. So one thing is uh, that exercise Lamitya has happened last month, and then uh, Navy aircraft on mission in Seychelles. The aircraft is maritime reco reconnaissance aircraft. It was P eighty one aircraft which has gone there this year. Last year also we have sent something for surveillance, and it was ship. it was not aircraft aircraft is more cheaper more efficient last year it was ship and then uh, <clears throat> what what is the significance of this why these kind of things happen why do we send aircraft there or why do we go for joint exercises so yeah maritime security especially your ior Indian Ocean region. See this time or the other this year or the other, you are definitely going to get some or the other question either in your prelims or in your interview or in your mains with respect to Indian Ocean region because this is the most happening region right now in the world map. All strategically important issues are taking place here. I O R. So and with respect to O B O R. China's OBOR, these kind of things. Your India Seychelles, what is happening? India Japan, what is happening? You can use it there. If the, if a question is asked, what is the India's initiatives in the last one year with respect to uh, counter the hegemony of China or Ch China's OBOR? There you can give these kind of examples, like with Seychelles, with littoral countries, how we are developing the relationships. Then. apart from this seychelles another thing has happened which is india and japan what has happened with respect to india and japan has japan promised us something in investment where andaman and nicobar what kind of investment civilian investment 
what they are going to do why how are they going to help us they are going to help us by building a 15 megawatt diesel power plant 15 megawatt diesel power plant in andaman and nicobar another one very interesting thing i came across are you aware of that has andaman and nicobar ever been under control of japan yes, yes. it was under control of japan for 3 years during world war 2 and when there was distribution of property after uh, british withdrawal from the subcontinent bidding was happening and in that bidding we won our prime minister jawaharlal nehru won against pakistan and australia we won the bid and we got andaman and nicobar so what does it signify japan 3 years it was having control so japan is well aware in and out of the this island and japan is helping us there see this is just 15 megawatt power diesel power plant it's not a big deal but it is very important why it's very small it's not very like too much money is involved but this small step is very important from india's point of view because number 1 for the very first time india has allowed any foreign investment in this archipelago very first time another thing is uh, last year there is 10 degree channel are you aware 10 degree between andaman and nicobar so very close to 10 degree channel even chinese have deployed their troops so we also need to have a strong presence in this particular area apart from that there is 6 degree channel what is 6 degree channel between nicobar and your indonesia or malaysia what indonesia yes so that is where that is also very important and there is strait of malacca also between indonesia and malaysia there is malacca strait and through that malacca strait almost 80% of china's fuel import takes place that is one of the major choke points so presence of india presence of japan in that area is very helpful for us especially with respect to having a say in ior region and this is just the beginning japan has said it is more than happy to invest even in the infrastructure sector like construction of bridges it is saying this is just a small beginning they are help they are ready to help in the construction of bridges ports and all it's not only japan many of the countries are waiting to have some kind of say in the development of this archipelago why because this particular location is geographically very important it is one of the best locations for aerial surveillance so every country wants to have some kind of a say in this particular area and they want to help india they want to have bilateral uh, things uh, to develop this particular area so this is about japan what has happened with respect to japan last month and how it is important because this kind of uh, things these kind of things are very important with respect to development of india's role in the ior region you can use this information if you get a question on the how india is <coughs> cooperating how india is collaborating with other countries to have a say in the ior region okay uh, additional information with andaman do we have any tri service command in andaman it's the only and the first tri service command we have in india is at andaman andaman nicobar command it's the only tri service command from pt perspective <coughs> okay now india sessions we have done india japan current thing that was there india and bangladesh another important neighbor bangladesh what has happened with respect to bangladesh last month tista what tista what happened with respect to tista they want to resolve the issue as soon as possible last month their foreign minister mahmud ali he said we are enjoying the very best of the relationship with india in this period because this is 
the golden period of India and Bangladesh friendship. 2014, we have solved the maritime issue. 2015, we have so uh, solved the land border issues. And now, we are having very good relationship. We are having uh, border hearts and all those things are also there organized. Even like uh, in Vaga border, we have ceremony. With Bangladesh border also, we are having that kind of ceremony. Read about it. These small informations are good for your PT. Okay. So, what happened with respect to Tista? What is the Tista issue? See, in 1983, India and Bangladesh, they have agreed on ad hoc basis of sharing of this Tista water. Tista river starts from your Sikkim and goes to your... Bangladesh and this is very important from agriculture point of view for both the countries. So, in 1983 ad hoc arrangement was there, India said, uh, India like uh, arrangement was made 36 percent of the water will go to Bangladesh, 36 percent to Bangladesh, 39 percent India and rest 25 percent they said we will decide it later on and in 2011 25% they said we will decide later on that was 1983 in 2011 they have agreed that they will be sharing 50 50 percent 2011 they said 50 50 percent we will share but that time what happened which chief minister raised the voice Mamta Banerjee so, because of that, it was decided, but it was not signed. So, now they are saying it's the best time where both of us are enjoying the very best of the relationships. So, we should go ahead with this thing also. Proper 50-50 thing that should be signed also. It was decided, now it should be signed as well as implemented. So, that was one aspect that has happened with respect to Bangladesh last uh, month. Apart from that, power agreement and internet service. Have we agreed to give them some power and get some internet service from them? What was it? We will be supplying them 100 megawatt of electricity and we will be, they will be sending us 10 gigabits per second of internet bandwidth. 100 megawatt electricity we will be supplying to them and they will be giving us 10 gigabits per second inter internet bandwidth. So, this was another important aspect that was covered last month. Right now, we, we are giving them 100 plus earlier we were giving them 500 megawatt through West Bengal. Now, 100 megawatt we will be go giving them through Tripura. So, to in total, India is giving them 600 megawatt of electricity. So, what is uh, good about this, this bandwidth, your northeast, your digital India program, yeah, your e-governance program, everything will be taken care of if the bandwidth is good. One important aspect with respect to your PT, if you want, please write it down. Now, Agartala, capital of Tripura. Agartala has become the third station connected to submarine cable for internet brand bandwidth, Chennai, Mumbai and Agartala, submarine cables for internet bandwidth. So, this is an important thing from your PT point of view, they might give you option, Agartala, Nagaland, Chennai, Delhi. So, you should be aware like Agartala has become the third city for this bandwidth. Okay. So, this thing electricity bandwidth that has also happened last month. Another thing that has happened last month was Sundarban Moitri. Sundarvan Moitri, Moitri in Bangla, I think friendship, yeah. So, Sundarvan Moitri 
exercise has happened it is a border security exercise between both the countries bangladesh as well as india so it has occurred this was the very first time it has happened in sundarban sundarban area is also very challenging because of its riverine nature that area also needs to have proper surveillance because lot of cross border terrorism smuggling yeah these things are happening so this is a joint exercise sundarban moitri between india and india and bangladesh and this is uh, not army is involved but border security force of both the countries are involved okay this is again important from your pt point of view they give you match match the countries with the exercise there you can use this information okay now you know what mr modi has complimented see the level of relationship between india and bangladesh right now he said now both the sides is connected through water surface communication and air we want to connect with bangladesh through space also so how cordial relationships we are having with bangladesh right now okay now the fifth topic that is given in your sheets is india's aid diplomacy aid aid diplomacy international on international forum aids is an important tool to develop relationship with any country aids aids are can be from different uh, perspectives they use the term aids they are uh, aids is they give you credit also on cheap loans also uh, then trade is also facilitated then training is also happening training and infrastructure development different kind of aids are there so what is happening this year you have got the figures you will get it when you will get the sheets how much percentage of reduction in assistance has happened i will read it out with respect to nepal we need to analyze this but just the figures i am telling you nepal with respect to nepal reduction has been 28.6% with respect to sri lanka 54% maldives 78.1% afghanistan 23% bhutan 10.8% bangladesh 40% now why what is the rationale behind what is the government saying why they have reduced this kind of assistance when china is trying to help each and every neighboring country and why we have reduced assistance number 1 if we take country wise say afghanistan many of the projects which were there has now almost completed like last time when uh, president uh, prime minister went there to inaugurate parliament many of the schools hospitals and all those uh, projects that were taken up earlier has now finished so there is no need to provide more aid then with respect to your bhutan many of the hydel power projects are in the initial stages which does not required much of the funding at the moment and some of them have been completed so that is the that is why the reduction has been done then with respect to your bangladesh now with uh, respect to bangladesh instead of giving them credit we are getting involved in direct development assistance paise dene ki jagah direct development assistance we are getting involved with respect to nepal or other countries another one of the argument given by government is aid absorption capacity you can use this word aid absorption capacity it's not given in your sheet aid absorption capacity what is aid absorption capacity what happens at times we are giving funds they are not using it properly on the other hand they are causing some kind of corruption also so that is aid ko absorb hi nahi kar pa rahe hain if we are giving it for particular project they are not using it they are using it for their selfish motives their corruption is erupting so no point of giving aid if the thing the thing for which we are giving aid if it is not taking place then no point so one of the arguments given forward by the government is aid absorption capacity of many of the countries are not there so right now as a punitive measure we have reduced the <coughs> aids so what is right now happening is 
it is being criticized when china is investing so much across india across the countries in ior region why are we doing why are we why are the government has reduced the aid so these are the arguments put forward by a, uh, the, by the government like many of the projects have been completed where at uh, places like bangladesh we have changed the strategy then there are some countries like nepal and or where aid absorption capacity is not there so that is why we have reduced so that was another piece of news okay rise in a dialogue and next topic given in your sheet is rise in a dialogue what is rise in a where is it rise in a hills every now and then newspaper may we read it rise in a hills why it is called rise in a have you ever thought of whose name rise in a see it's a history uh, there was one uh, kalda rao kalda rao was the ruler was the jag jagirdar of that particular area somewhere around uh, 16000 and 17000 so, sorry 1600 and 1700 ke across delhi and uh, surrounding areas mein he was the ruler he was the jagirdar and he was given a title rao simha he was given a title rao simha means lion simha simha so from there it has become rai sina whenever you read try to develop some kind of curiosity it is good okay so rai sina dialogue 2016 this is the first time india has started this initiative do we have any kind of other dialogues across the world can you recall have you heard about shangri la dialogue where does it happen singapore strategic importance डिफेंस के परस्पेक्टिव से होती है अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट यूनिक डायलॉग जर्मनी इट हैपन्स देन मनामा डायलॉग मनामा मनामा डेक्लोरेशन वॉज देयर टू मंथ्स बैक इन द न्यूज आर यू अवेयर डू यू रिकॉल इट आर फॉरन मिनिस्टर इज वेंट देयर या सो मनामा डायलॉग इज ऑल्सो देयर सो दे आर डिफरेंट डायलॉग्स सो इंडिया हैज ऑल्सो स्टार्टेड इट्स अ geo economic and geo political strategy by the government of india just to connect with different countries it's a wider platform where uh, issues of important national international things are being discussed this is the first time it has happened in uh, india uh, approximately 40 countries have participated in it and the theme of it was asia's integration as well as it was a inter and intra integration of asian countries inter means within asia intra means asian countries with other countries across the globe so the main purpose behind this raisena dialogue is to develop inter and intra asian connectivity and the theme was asian connectivity this time the topic was asian connectivity we are trying to connect with the other asian countries through physical economic digital connectivity measures we are trying to have a cooperation with these measures and one fact important from your pt point of view it is held jointly by ministry of external affairs plus observer research foundation ORF Observer Research Foundation it's a think tank which operates in india observer research foundation plus ministry of external affairs from pt point of view this rise in a dialogue is conducted by this these two entities see the theme was asian connectivity that was the theme which was was apparent but actually the undercurrent was how to develop connectivity within india to check the hegemony of china that is there so main purpose was ki kaise how to connect the asian countries together india can bind them together
so that India can have its own cloud rather than these countries should go for China. So that is one important aspect with respect to rise in a dialogue. Okay. Then another thing which has happened was BIMSTEC. What happened with respect to BIMSTEC? What is BIMSTEC? Bay of Bay of Bengal Initiative for Okay. Where is the headquarters? Dhaka. When was it established? BIMSTEC? 1997. Okay. So, with respect to BIMSTEC, one piece of news was there which you can use it if you get a question with respect to BIMSTEC. That is uh, <coughs> Bay of Bengal. This is mutual legal assistance in criminal matters. Mutual legal assistance in criminal matters. One convention has been signed within BIMSTEC countries with respect to mutual legal <coughs> assistance in criminal matters. So, how it is going to help the countries, BIMSTEC countries? Extradition is there to uh, fight terrorism, trans uh, border uh, uh, terrorism is there, then crossing of the border, these kind of things, legal issues can be solved through this BIMSTEC. Uh, convention. Okay. Now, Ashgabad agreement, important topic. Where is Ashgabad? Where is Ashgabad? Capital of Turkmenistan. What is this Ashgabad agreement? In 2000, sorry, 2011, five countries have come together to develop a shortest route between Central Asian countries, Iran and Omani ports. Central Asia, Iran and Omani. How many countries are there in Central Asia from PT point of view? Okay, name the countries, Turkmenistan, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan. Okay, because at times they might add up Afghanistan or some other country with the ending of Tan. So, you should be clear what are the five countries which are there in Central Asia from PT point of view. Okay, so this Ashgabad ag agreement is in 2001, the five countries, they came together, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Iran, Oman and Qatar to develop the shortest route between Central Asia, Iran and Omani ports, Oman. In 2013, Qatar has withdrawn from it. 2013, Qatar has withdrawn from it and then in 2011, Kazakhstan has joined it. So, why it was in news with respect to India? Because our cabinet has given an approval to India to join this Ashkabad agreement. Why it is important for India? This is basically a connectivity infrastructure links. So, you can write it down. Some points are not given even in your sheets. You can write it down. Number one, this agreement is very useful for getting access to the Central Asian countries from Indian perspective. We also have a look central, uh, we have a connect Central Asia policy also. This will give boost to connect Central Asia policy. Then we have a look west, po uh, look west policy also. That will be promoted with this. Then again OBOR. When there is OBOR, when China is trying, then why can't we also have regional collaboration with the countries to develop our trade routes infrastructure? From that perspective also, it is important. We should go for more regional forums than OBOR because India has not joined it. 
अगर ज्वाइन भी नहीं कर रहे हैं तो उसके काउंटर में कुछ तो करना पड़ेगा सो दैट फ्रॉम दैट एंगल ऑल्सो इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट देन इट इज ऑल्सो इंपॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम आई एन एस टी सी इंटरनेशनल नाउथ नॉर्थ साउथ ट्रेड कॉरिडोर फ्रॉम दैट परस्पेक्टिव ऑल्सो इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वॉट इज आई एन एस टी सी हाउ मेनी कंट्रीज आर देयर इट इज इंडिया इरान एंड रशिया वॉट इज हैपनिंग राइट नाउ जस्ट अ ब्रीफ अबाउट वॉट इज आई एन एस टी सी दिस इज वॉट इज हैपनिंग राइट नाउ वी आर यूजिंग the route via rotterdam or via st petersburg to reach russia now what we are doing is last year uh, trial run has also been conducted from india to bandar abbas iran via sea link then there is another port within iran the, from there we can go by road to that port and from that particular port in iran to your russia by sea so this is a link which is going to save the present route is via rotterdam or via st petersburg this instc between india iran and russia if it is actually happening then it saves 30% it's 30% cheaper and 40% of shorter than the present route so instc is very important and from that perspective ashgabad agreement is also important another important thing is which is not given in your sheets you can write it down this particular agreement has certain rail links also like tat you can write turkmenistan afghanistan and tajikistan tat t a t tat okay so tat is one link and then iran turkmenistan kazakhstan itk iran turkmenistan and kazakhstan these two are links train links if we join it we can use these links also to connect to the central asian economies that will be very much helpful and then with respect to turkmenistan even turkmenistan has agreements with european union south caucasus countries and all so that will be very beneficial if we join the group we will have a connectivity to many of the areas of the central asia so that is why it's very important for india to have joined this group <coughs> okay another thing that was in news was eighth brick summit eighth brick summit where did it happen did happen or it is going to happen this time it is going to take place in goa okay from pt point of view eight brick summit we are going to have it in goa why it is important we are the chairperson this time we have got the chairmanship of this uh, uh, summit this time and uh, apart from that our major focus will be on institution building but within brics countries institution building is there implementation is there integration is there continuity with consolidation of the previous summits we will be trying to build the integration institution building all those things we will try to have a proper cooperation between brics countries what when it was called bric Which year? From brick to bricks. कौन से साल में हुआ ये? 2009 it was brick. 2010 with the inclusion of South Africa it became bricks. Okay. So why is bricks important from India? See these are small small piece of news. But the thing you need to analyze when you are preparing why is bricks important for India? Yes, 42 percent of the global population is there in this brick countries vast market 42% of the global population is there in the brics countries number 2 all the brics countries approximately they have 6 trillion dollar economy that is again good for india apart from that 
like last month we talked about or last to last month we talked about britain wood twins hegemony imf and world bank now we have new development bank that is also good for india we will be getting more funds especially for your infrastructure development that is also important and within brics also the countries can trade in their local currencies so again the hegemony of dollar will be curtailed that is also good and apart from that india and china though they are rivaling everywhere but there because of the economic aspects they are getting some or the other kind of platform to come together to cooperate so that is why brics is very important for us from that perspective also otherwise what happens everywhere obor we are doing something or the other ior region we are fighting but here in brics we are together and this is a good platform to develop to bridge the gap it can be used that way also so brics is an important platform for india <coughs> okay then another thing was in the news that was 37th session of sark council of ministers where did it happen it was very much in the news because of the pathan court attack talks were cancelled and in nepal our foreign minister was meeting their foreign minister it was there in the news 36 37th session of the sark council of ministers it happened in Pok pokhara in nepal to discuss the last issues that were uh, the last issues to review the last issues that were taken up in the last sark summit and to discuss the agenda for the next sark summit which, which is going to happen in pakistan so the thing uh, which were discussed or which were decided was 19th sark summit will be held in pakistan that was one thing which was decided in this conference and then every alternate november they are going to have sark summit that was also decided apart from that uh, amzad hussain b sial is going to be the next secretary general that was he is from pakistan amzad hussain b sial he is going to be the secretary general so that was also decided and then important thing if you with respect to sark nations their collaboration you might get a question on disaster management how sark countries can collaborate so sark disaster management center will be in new delhi cooperation within sark countries you might get a question because after nepal earthquake it was felt that we really need to have a proper dis disaster management response within sark nations also like we have in asean they have a logo matlab they promote it one asean one response at the time of disaster they all come together what happened when nepal earthquake occurred india apne se kar raha hai help pakistan apne se kar raha hai have they all been collaborative then things would have been much better so in this summit it has been decided to have sark disaster management center in new delhi apart from that environment center would be merged with the existing sark energy center in islamabad that is not given you can write it down environment center sark environment center will be merged with existing sark energy center from pt point of view these small small informations which is in islamabad okay now next important issue which needs a little bit more analysis was elections in where iran or iraq iran what is so revolutionary about elections in iran this time 26th of february 2016 elections were conducted in iran for the first time majlis the iranian parliament as well as assembly of experts there are like you know what is assembly of experts are you aware of it 
okay one is parliament and then there is assembly of experts so assembly of experts their uh, duty is to conduct election and removal of the supreme leader in iran as well as to supervise kind of watch the functioning of that supreme leader so first time in the history of iran both the elections were held simultaneously that is not given that uh, like they were held simultaneously you can just jot it down that like both the elections have held simultaneously and the outcome of the election was reformist more liberal people they were voted they got maximum votes and for the first time many of the women have got their seats secured in the parliament that's a welcome change and after the historic iran nuclear deal the elections has happened and people have voted for the reformist people have voted for the liberals this shows that people want to go for openness and people wholeheartedly accept that nuclear deal that is why they have voted for it so the people want more connectivity with the outside world they are now sick and tired of those sanctions and staying in one particular box now they want to open out and this is good for other countries especially with respect to india also why iran election is important because the more and more democratic democracy is coming in uh, iran and iran is very important for us why iran is important till 2011 iran was the third largest oil crude oil supplier to india but now after the sanctions things changed but now the sanctions have been lifted and more liberal more open economy is going to be there so it is good for india like recently iran has also commented like uh, generic medicines they said india is one of the best producers of generic medicines it shows our pharmaceutical industry has a great opportunity in iran even iran needs us for infrastructure development we will be getting business in infrastructure technology it sector and we also need iran one is your inst corridor that is very important for us from if we have good relationship then chabar port is also there that is also very important for us so in a way the elections and the outcomes of iran elections are very important for india and it's a good sign also yeah another important uh, thing that was in news was nepal and china yeah so many editorials so many articles on nepal and china what has happened mr roli visited china mr roli visited china and there were 10 MOUs were inked. Thus, MOU signed away the wahan pe, and they are of very strategic importance. Some of them, most of the MOU MOUs were in the respect of your infrastructure development, transit, trade. Then scholarships were also discussed. Banking sector uh, was also discussed. Energy was also their MOUs. So there were so many MOUs signed. Basically, ten MOUs were signed. and why it is important because india nepal china india has been a very close ally of china since very long but after that nepal crisis that a long blockade situations have changed and china has got a chance to poke inside nepal so this is a great concern for us so one by one Tianjin Sea Port Tianjin Sea Port what has happened there China has agreed to let Nepal use Tianjin Sea Port for its imports from the third countries right now nine, approximately 90% of the trade for uh, Nepal is happening through our Kolkata and Haldia ports so for the first time Tianjin port they have agreed for it apart from that nepal has even said uh, sorry china has even agreed to have a rail link through tibet that is points are given 
we will be doing the analysis points you can read it out there is a commercial oil deal also between china and nepal they have also agreed for oil storage also now the thianjin sea port if we analyze it apparently it looks very like it's a very uh, important thing for us because they till now 98% of the trade has been happening through haldia but now they are using the engine they will be using not uh, using right now they will be using so what is happening apparently it looks very serious but if you go minutely into it haldia is 1000 km away from nepal and thianjin is 3000 km away from nepal so there are distance what will happen to the perishable goods what will happen to the valuable goods that is also an issue because of the distance then currently india has a well developed infrastructure connecting from your uh, haldia to your nepal but right now from thianjin nepal the infrastructure is not that well developed it will take time it will require lots of money lots of energy so it's not something which is going to disturb us at the moment second thing is your rail connectivity it is talking about joining nepal via tibet but the thing is it's they have to build infrastructure at the height of 6000 uh, yeah 6000 uh, meters also which is not so simple and at the same time it's not politically clear also how much tibet has to be open for the outsiders it's not clear so that is also another issue now what is the impact how do you see this impact of course short term it's not going to be of that much impact on us but in the long term it is definitely going to have some kind of in impact on us but if you see it if we analyze it right now we have approximately 6 million nepalese living in india 6 million nepalese are living in india they are getting a national treatment you can write the terms they are getting a national treatment under treaty of peace and friendship 1950 they don't need visas they don't need work permits they are working here they are sending remittances to nepal second thing even in our indian army we have a gorkha regiment approximately 40000 soldiers are there it's not given in the analysis you can write it down if you want so 40000 people in our indian army are from good encouragement so that is also another thing it's like in the letter it looks but in the spirit it's very difficult then at the same time we have that roti beti ka rishta economic and social integration which is not there with china is it's not there with china and this this time because of the blockade nepal has shown the china card but it's not the first time nepal is doing this it has done in 1960s also when king mahendra was there and subsequently king ganendra king uh, uh, then king mahendra everybody brijendra they have shown this time and again so it's not a first time they are showing us this card apart from them if we see the infrastructure that china will be helping to develop in nepal the top priority of the china will be to keep priority of obor in focus it will not keep the priority of nepal in focus it will be using nepal so that is also another concern nepal has given loans also but only 25% of the loan is interest free rest it's not everything comes with the cost nepal has to Uh, Nepal has to work as per China. What happened? Uh, the investments in Sri Lanka, the Chinese investment. What kind of experience they are sh- uh, having with Chinese investment, even in Myanmar. So, fuk fuk ke kadam rakhna padega Nepal ko bhi. And at the same time, Nepal is a small market. China is uh, India is a big market. So China will also take that thing into consideration. Immediately, it will not shift all its focus to Nepal. because india is a huge market china is just an option which it is taking advantage of so that is also if we analyze the things 
so it's not immediately it is going to hamper the relationships but in the long term it might be of crucial importance so what should we do if you get a question ki india how should india take the growing china and nepal relationship you might get a question in your mains also so what should india do what should india do we should try to bridge the gap abhi tak jo bhi aaya we should try to cement that gap number second we should try to develop more infrastructure proper infrastructure delays and all the things that are happening in transportation that should be cut down even in 2011 uh, right now what is happening China, sorry nepal is using your calcutta and haldia ports in 2011 agreement they have discussed like they will be using vizag kandla ports also why because uh, your uh, this is a geography thing your kolkata and haldia port they are riverine ports so big vessels they, it is not that deep so that big vessels can come what happen they offload the cargo and then small vessels are taken so that makes a delay that is why in 2011 they have discussed like they will be using vizag port they will be using kandla port but it was only discussed nothing concrete has happened so we should try to make it fast forward so that china does not get any chance to move to sorry nepal does not get any chance to move to china so the things that we have discussed we should implement that also even in 2004 we had one rail agreement with them also like we have discussed india nepal rail service agreement 2004 see this small small information you can use in your answers when it is said like what should india do to counter these things so uh, like growing relationship between china and nepal in 2004 there was india nepal rail agreement to have train between haldia and kolkata to birganj in nepal that was agreed but practically it's not happening so we should make it more faster these kind of agreement should be implemented soon apart from that bbin corridor bbin corridor is there so we should also promote such kind of groupings bbin corridor is there then kolkata raksol birganj nepal there is a bus route also road route which is operating but it's not in a good shape so we should develop the road infrastructure properly so these kind of solutions you can write suggestions you can give how to better the relationship between india and nepal okay another thing that was important was democratic transition in myanmar what has happened in myanmar after 50 years first time some civilian has become a president what is his name what is his name okay hitin kwa i i don't know how to pronounce it kwa i know but hitin or it's tin or yeah tin kwa okay so he has become the president why aung san suu kyi did not uh, become president constitution says because she is her children are not the citizens of myanmar so she has appointed her best buddy kwa as president okay how many portfolios uh, she is having aung san suu kyi with her earlier it were four portfolios that she was having it was energy it was foreign affairs then like we have a pmo they have a president uh, president's office is there there also she was having a minister's position there education energy foreign affairs and uh, uh, this uh, minister in president's office but latest development is she has given up two portfolios 4th of april she has given up two portfolios energy and education she has given up now she is having only two portfolios that is foreign affairs and president's office minister in president's office and even uh, myanmar parliament has also proposed to give her a position of state councillor 
स्टेट काउंसलर विच इज इक्वेल टू प्राइम मिनिस्टर सिमिलर टू प्राइम मिनिस्टर तो पार्लियामेंट हैज प्रपोज इट्स नॉट राइट नाउ हैपनिंग बट इट हैज प्रपोज टू गिव हर अ पोजिशन ऑफ स्टेट काउंसलर सो इट इज गुड डेमोक्रेसी हैज एट लीस्ट सम स्टेप्स हैव टेकन प्लेस विद रिस्पेक्ट टू डेमोक्रेटिक म्यांमार म्यांमार इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अस बिकॉज वी शेयर अप्रॉक्सीमेटली थाउजेंड किलोमीटर्स ऑफ बॉर्डर विद म्यांमार there are many insurgent anti india groups also residing in myanmar so if we have a good relationship it is good so what are the challenges of the new government government to ban gayi but challenge kya hai one of the biggest challenges 25% of the seats are reserved for military junta government was there 25% of the seats are reserved for military there so what will happen if any reform has to be brought in it will be very difficult to get it passed in the parliament that is one issue and constitutionally your internal security external security and defense it lies with junta sorry not junta government it lies with the military so that is again a big issue then abhi government to bani hai but one of the most least developed countries is myanmar there is lot of poverty in myanmar that also needs to be taken care of apart from that ethnic conflicts are also there last year rohingyas issue was there who are rohingyas rohingyas are muslims who are taken as illegal migrants from bangladesh by the myanmar people so that issue is also there then there are certain provinces which want especially provinces which are nearing the border of china in that provinces ethnic people want more federal government so they have some kind of unrest but those their unrest is subdued by the military and still the internal control is internal differences in the hands of military so it will be very difficult for them to tackle the situation so these are the analysis of this particular aspect then there is another issue golden triangle is there drug issue a big issue in myanmar what is golden triangle Laos, Myanmar, and Thailand, and there is Golden Crescent also. Where is it? Yes, Iran, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. Okay. Now terror in terror attack in Belgium. Belgium me terror attack hua tha in the airport and in the metro station. You can read about it. Why? Why it? Uh, why only Belgium? Belgium why? why so much like so many uh, anti social people are there in uh, terrorist attacks are happening in belgium why it is happening there what is the reason behind that have you ever thought itna chota sa country hai but still why it's a proxy capital of european union nato and all those but still sab kuch hote hue bhi wahan pe attack ho gaya why intelligence agency and police are not cooperating and the intelligence agency intelligence culture is very less there even the police apparatus the whole of the belgium have approximately 1000 sorry 10000 employees in the security services 10000 approximately 10000 people in the security services so infrastructure police infrastructure is not proper then schengen visa can you relate it with that aspect it's a country open we uh, borderless country it has borders with which all countries it has borders with your germany france and uk so one can easily after committing the crime one can easily pass to the other country within 2 hours you can complete whole of belgium that is another issue why belgium is the hot spot then per capita belgium has the highest number of foreign fighters because there is racism also there the muslims in belgium they are facing racism because of which radicalization is happening there so easily that is another aspect why Bel belgium has become a hot spot of terror apart from that the reputation of belgium is like you can easily buy and sell illegal arms there it's also a reputation of belgium so that is why belgium has become a easy hot spot of terror
Okay, another important thing was Cuba thaw. What is Cuba thaw? Term used by media. Paper पढ़ते होंगे Cuba thaw, Cuba thaw, Cuban thaw. Yes, growing relationship between Cuba and U.S. Why? From since when Cuba and U.S. are having no relationship? Dip 1961 diplomatic relationships were severed they were cut why 1959 fidel castro came into power yeah and then us thought when fidel castro will be there he will be turning this block into a communist block and us was uh, training and financing the rebels also to go for a coup against fidel castro and then there is another important even 1961 was your uh, that was your bay of pigs invasion trained people from usa they invaded but they failed so since 1961 the relationship is severed but now since last 2014 they are trying to bridge the gap between the two countries usa has removed cuba from the list of countries which sponsor terrorism 2015 they have opened embassies in each other's countries also even with respect to your trade also and some relaxations have been done with respect to trade and travel also now many of the all of a sudden cuban economy has got a boom because of tourism many of the people from us are traveling to cuba so these are some of the measures taken up by them but what is the main issue why the things cannot be normalized so soon what are the issues or concerns raised by cuba first is to remove to remove the embargo trade barriers jo bhi embargo laga hai please remove it cuba is saying completely remove it but the issue is it's not that easy because embargo have been codified into laws now those embargo have been codified into laws and to remove them us needs the approval of the congress it's not that simple so that is one aspect why this is not happening it why there is a roadblock it's it was it will take some time because it has to be approved by the congress second thing is usa now wants to develop civil society and entrepreneurs in cuba now the main motive or objective of the usa would be to develop the civil society and entrepreneurs in cuba for that they will be needing to go for a better exchange of people between the two countries but cuban people still face certain restrictions to enter usa so those things need to be curtailed out second issue is your guantanamo bay usa is having it on lease it is having its naval base there and cuba is saying return it back to us we don't want to give it any further on lease to you so that is again another issue another issue is like since 1959 when the communism or socialism has entered cuba people in cuba are enjoying free education free health services and all so right now some of the olden cubans are very skeptical about the new economy capitalism so that is also kind of a blockade so they are skeptical pata nahi kya hoga ye sari cheeze chale jayengi so it will happen it will take time of course the relationships are getting better then there is 16 uh, point global energy architecture performance index report it is important see whenever there is some kind of report or some kind of indices come in the news please read from pt perspective like happiness index has also come we will take up that also from pt point of view try to know the first five countries what is india's position and what is the position of uh, countries neighboring india because in happiness bangladesh is better doing better than us so they might ask you what is the position sequence or first five top top five last ki panch india and neighboring whenever indices come that is going to help you in your pt so this time global energy architecture performance index report has come this is a report 
where 126 countries were considered and India has ranked 90, 90, 90 position in India. Ki. This is based on the, this report is based parameters also. Koi bhi report aati hai, please try to recall, remember the parameters because at times they ask HDI is calculated on 1, 2, 3, 4, which of the following parameters. So, this report is calculated on the parameters of affordability, then environment sustainability and security or access. Thikhe? These are the parameters, you will get it in the sheet also. And this report is prepared by World Economic Forum in collaboration with Accenture. Accenture is a company, private company. So, this is not a UN report, PT, one small fact. This is prepared by World Economic Forum with, in collaboration with Accenture. <coughs> one line is given there report about India. It says the report noted that India is facing a vast array of challenges in the power sector in order to meet its growing targets. Now, an international report has come. You might get a question, what are the challenges faced by the power sector in India? Because highlight to a world platform, mein, there might be a question from this. So, whenever you are reading some current, try to see what kind of question can come from that current. You might get a question, challenges of power sector in India. Even in WTO power issue, that thing has happened, solar panel wala issue. Abhi is report mein India ka 90th position hai. So, you might get, try to mark the issues which are important from po uh, examination point of view. You don't need to read everything. If this is a very smart exam, you be smart see what things are there, what kind of report, what kind of uh, ranking is in, given uh, for India, why, what kind of statement is given for India. So, you can make a question out of that. Okay. Another important report was World Happiness Report 2016. Out of 156 countries, we are 118th. Bahut dukhi hai hum log. We have everything but we are very sad. So, out of 156 countries, we are at the 116th position. So, try to find out the first 5 countries, last 5 countries, India and neighboring countries. That will be helpful for your PT. Okay, another thing which is not given in your uh, uh, answer sh this sheets, you can write one fact which might come in PT. For the first time in this report, first time in this report, there is a special role to the special role to the measurement and consequences of inequality. Measurement and consequences of inequality has been taken care of with respect to happiness. In the distribution of well-being among countries and regions. I repeat, first time special role to the measurement and consequences of inequality in the distribution of well-being among countries and region. First time this aspect has also been taken care of. What are the parameters of happiness report? GDP per capita, life expectancy, then you have social support and freedom to make choices. On the basis of this, it is calculated which country is the most happy. Which is the most happy country? Denmark. Okay. With respect to your essay, ethics and agar kisi ka philosophy option hai, please read the third chapter of this report. It's very good. The third chapter says challenges of public happiness. For it, it will be beneficial for you in your essays or in your ethics. Last to last year they asked you what according to you is happiness. Yeah. So, they are asking you questions. Read these kind of reports. Chapter 3, Challenges of Public Happiness. It talks about Aristotle's view of happiness as well as the modern view of happiness, which talks about the materialistic world. So, it is a very good report. It will be helpful for you in different papers. Okay. Then another thing, email inventor Ray Tamilson has died. That is, who, who was Ray Tamilson? You might get a question in your PT to... So that, okay. 
See, it talks about sustainability also, na. For electricity, basically for electricity. Read about the report carefully. Even I'll read about the report carefully. <coughs> okay. Now the last topic, which is important. Four nation counter terror mechanism. This is important. Why? Because again, OBOR is in focus. Four nation counter terror mechanism. OBOR is there. China is uh, saying like for proper implementation, for proper success of OBR, there are certain threats. Certain threats from. Xinjiang province also, what is happening in Xinjiang province, what kind of rebel is going on there? Turkistan, Turkmenistan, Turkistan, sorry not Turkmenistan, Turkistan, Turks in that region they want separate Turkistan. So that is one rebel thing that is happening in Xinjiang province which is going to affect the, which might affect the security of OBOR passage from that area. Then even in Afghanistan also, terrorists are there, ISIS is there. So China, one of the generals of China has said like we should go for a counter terror mechanism. The four countries will, they have proposed China, Pakistan, Afghanistan and Kazakhstan. China, Pakistan, Afghanistan and Kazakhstan. Two, take care of that particular OBOR route. So it's good if it is done in a proper manner that will provide security to the whole region, this particular region. But the thing is they are saying we will station our troops along the OBOR route. So India being an Indian, we have concerns. Why should you allow Chinese troop to be stationed near India in different countries? That is one aspect, hidden motive of China. Second is if they are stationing their troops across India, then those troops will get a first hand information of the physical and economic activities of those areas. They will be becoming very uh, like friendly. बहुत आसान हो जाएगा उनको उन एरिया की ज्योग्राफी एंड एवरीथिंग लोकेशन एंड एवरीथिंग को समझने के लिए सो दैट इज आल्सो अ मेजर कंसर्न और राइट नाउ दे आर सेइंग वी विल बी डिप्लॉइंग फॉर सम टाइम इट माइट टर्न इनटू अ परमानेंट बेसिस आल्सो अगेन दिस विल बी अ प्रॉब्लम फॉर इंडिया इंडिया शुड रेज वॉइस एंड व्हाट विल हैपन सपोजिंगली द फॉरेन ट्रूप डिप्लॉयड इन सम अदर कंट्री से चाइनीज ट्रूप डिप्लॉयड इन सम अदर कंट्री एंड सम लॉ एंड ऑर्डर प्रॉब्लम हैपेंस then what kind of law will be applied to that? That should be clear. Of course, it's a good thing. The whole region will be secure. The whole route will be secure. It is good for each and every country which falls across that road. But the thing is, these issues need to be analyzed. So the thing that was in news was four nation counter terror mechanism. You need to analyze. Okay, is it good for India? Is it not good for India? Because you are not getting direct questions. You are getting questions on analysis how it would impact India. So think on that lines. So it's done and I hope now you everyone will get the booklet. Things are clear to you.